Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to What If Naruto Lost His Humanity Part 3. And I'm not going to drag out the intro too long, I'm just saying I hope you guys are still enjoying this What If. I'm looking at the views and it ain't too nice, but I'm still going to keep making it because it's going to be a short What If anyway. But yes, I hope you guys do enjoy. If you did, make sure you comment down below what else you want to see, what you enjoyed about the What If, what you didn't like, what I can improve on. And yeah, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss another daily upload. Share with your friends and family. And other than that guys, let's get straight into the video. We now go to Naruto and Sasuke, who are sleeping in a tree. I've got like two separate trees, and they're talking to each other. And Sasuke is Naruto, so what's your plan from here? And Naruto says, honestly Sasuke, I'm gonna wait till I'm about 16 maybe, and I'm fucking up the leaf village. So hearing the Sasuke frizz up a bit, because he did have some friends in the leaf village, and he goes, what if you... I mean... Sasuke goes, what if you, Naruto says, no Sasuke, you had the promise, if you come with me, you back me. If you don't want me to destroy the leaf village, you can go back to it and wait for me to come fuck it up. I won't kill you, but you'll get fucked up with it. Hearing this, Sasuke says, I understand why you want it, but we have friends there. Naruto says, no, you have friends there. Sasuke says, what about Hinata, she always had a crush on you. Naruto pauses for a second and says, that doesn't matter now, does it? I'm not exactly the same Naruto she knew back then. Sasuke tries to convince Naruto out of it to the point Naruto starts getting pissed off, his bloodlust pours out and he says no Sasuke, sure you were looked at as a new Chiho you could have destroyed the village, or we all came out and tried destroying the village, I was viewed as a demon, I was beaten every day, I was kidnapped for experiments, they literally killed my dog and they tried to kill me, only reason I am alive is because of a disaster like I've said. Here in this, Sasuke freezes up and he says, I know, Naruto actually stand, stands up and he rushes at Sasuke, chucking him off his tree and pins him to the ground. His voice turns demonic as so does his eyes turn their red and black, his fangs appear. And he says, you butt me one more time, the village is getting destroyed and you can have a go down with it or you can come with me. I don't care how much I care about you, how much we're friends. This is my life goal, same way your life goal is just killing Itachi. If I asked you not to kill Itachi, but for some stupid ass reason like memories, are you going to do it? No. And Sasuke hearing this, he got put into perspective. He's, he's right. If that Naruto asked Sasuke not to kill Itachi, he weren't going to listen. It's not fair for him to ask Naruto not to kill a leaf just because he liked it. And he says, Naruto, I'm sorry, he says no. You're not sorry, you just realised you're wrong. If we have to say this one more fucking time, you can go back to Leaf Village where you belong, you dirty little Chiha tramp. Naruto didn't mean a single word of this, he was just really pissed off, but it hurt Sasuke, it cut him deep. And he says, what did you call me? Naruto turns around and he says, oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean it, but you're defending the people who made my life a living hell. Right now I'm looking at you and all I'm feeling is fucking hatred. Not directed at you, directed at your message. Here in the Sasuke realises what he was doing. He was literally defending the people who caused his best friend complete living hell for years and years. The people who tried to literally kill his best friend, experiment on him. And he says, yeah, Naruto, I'm, I'm sorry. Naruto just sighs and says, it doesn't matter now, let's just get, let's try get some sleep. Naruto lays down. But not for long, as within an hour, he senses the presence of about a hundred people. He sits up and he tells Naruto and Sasuke to hide. They do. They hide using Naruto's camouflage jutsu. And about a hundred shinobi from all different villages. The leaf, the sand, the cloud, the village in the mist. I forgot the other one. Oh, the rock, or oh, the stone village. They all appear. No, I did, not, did I say 100? I mean a 1,000. And they go, Naruto is a mucky, you're coming with us for the crimes against the Leaf Village, the mass murder of thousands. Naruto laughs and says, have they told you why they were murdered? 
the rare Kage steps forward and yeah, all the Kage are there. And he goes, actually, yes, I've been interested in this. As no one goes on a rampage for no reason. We got told it was a Ninetales Fox went berserk. But at the same time, that doesn't really justify it. Naruto says, why don't I show you? The third Hokage attempts to stop him, knowing that if the other Hokage see what they did to him, they would not stand by him. They might help, they might stop the Leafiness from being destroyed, but they will not stand by the third Hokage. He says, no, it's a trick. Naruto stares at the third Hokage, and all of a sudden, his legs snap, and he goes, hold him, bastard, when I'm talking, but you don't talk unless I'm talking to you. See, in this sort of... Kage felt a bit of fear. Haruzin was recognised as one of, if not the strongest Hakage, right, alive at that point. And for him to be defeated like that so easily. Naruto looks all the Hakage in the eye, including Haruzin, and show him all the stuff that he had to go through. He can share his memories. All the experiments conducted on him while he was awake. He had his stomach cut open and then sealed his organs messed about with, all while he was awake. He had his eyes torn out and put back in. All the abuse from the villagers, him watching his dog get killed, and him bringing him back to life. Of course, they let him. They let him know about that. Him getting beaten every single day, his health getting trashed, him getting hanged from trees, and just barely let go before he died. And then eventually, the day he actually did die, after all the Hokages come out of this vision Sarah, and they all begin to throw up, and they all stare at Hiroshima with the most hatred and said, "You dirty old bastard! He was a boy. He was the third Hokage. He was the fourth Hokage's son." Hearing this, Naruto goes, wait, what? He stares Ruzan in the eyes and he recognises it's the truth. And he goes, he begins laughing, saying, oh, all this time, I was the third Okage, I was the fourth Okage son. And you still treat me like a piece of shit on your shoe. That settles it, you're not leaving this place alive. Naruto rushes out the third Okage just for the right Kage to step in and says, no, stop. And he blasts Naruto back and he says, I understand your hatred. If I was in your position right now, I would go to kill him as well. But he does run the leaf village, we can't have it fall into havoc. And Naruto goes, I have no issues with you other four Hokage, but get him away again and you're going to have a war on your hands. The Hokage lasts into the war, a war with who? Naruto smirks. He clicks his fingers and a bunch of Demonic creatures being appear by the thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, basically a million. And they all stare on the stand in the trees, fly in the sky, on the ground, stand on the cargo. The Rakage's heart drops to his stomach and he go and he only thought to himself is he, he's a one man army. It doesn't matter how much of a good relationship we had with the Leaf Village, we cannot get involved with this. This will be a full blown war for any village. And instead, the Rakage puts out his hand and says, If not, I understand all the pain you went through. I understand the hatred. And I just want to say, I had a lot of respect for your father. We fought, again, we fought once in the war and he absolutely beat the shit out of me. I couldn't lay a finger on him. There's always a place for you in this cloud village if you want it. Here in this court, Naruto of God, everyone he's ever met in, in gave, him, gave him back hate. But this man, maybe it's out of fear, he still treated him with respect. Even when he first met him, he was only a bit disrespectful because he was afraid of what he could do. Sorry guys, I'm back. I had to deal with things. Someone in my school rushed on, rushed an SEN kid after school, that autistic kid, slapped him about and then chucked him in the bush. I had to deal with that very quickly. But anyway, yeah, after they saw it now. But... The Raikage only feared Naruto for what he could do. He didn't hate him, he didn't want to kill him. And Naruto was, wasn't was exactly so over the moon about it, but it gave him a bit of, not respect, but he appreciated a bit. So if it came to it, Naruto ain't gonna slice his man down here today unless he starts to fight. But that one's looking at him, he could tell one of them was looking at him with pure fear, hatred and all that. And that was the woman. The one wearing a blue, the uh, wearing the one wearing a, I forgot her name. The one wearing a blue outfit with brown with brown hair. So Naruto said to her, "If you don't take that glare off me, you're gonna lose your eyes." And then she said, "How dare you threaten a Kage?" And she attacked him with a blast of steam. Naruto just walks through it with, uh, with ease and teleports right in front of her and says, "I warned you." He gouges out both her eyes and 
gouges out both her eyes and crushes them. She screams. The rock of Kage says, no, damn it. All the other Kage there begin to attack Naruto. And Naruto just begins laughing, saying, you really think I'm afraid of you? He begins blitzing all the Kage, except for the rock Kage. He was sort of getting involved and sort of not. He was more trying to split it up. And as such, he was spared by Naruto at least. After about two minutes, all the Kokago on the ground proves battered. And the Rokage begins at but his light mode saying, I didn't want to do this, but you leave me no choice. Naruto glares at the Rokage saying, Make your next choice very, very wisely. One wrong move, and I'll slice your head off. Uh, Rakage takes a gulp saying, I, I have to do this, I'm sorry. That's when it happens. Naruto gets hit by an unseen force and he gets it flying backwards. He looks up and a man with orange hair and purple eyes saying, Naruto Uzumaki, we need to talk. And he screams, I'm not talking to no one, you pink eyed, you pink eyed bastard. And he lunges at him and whips out his sword. We all know this to be pain and he used to all my push, but Naruto swings his blade and it actually ends up eating the chakra, going right through the white push, and Naruto decks pain hard in the chest, sending him flying. And he says, you lot are lucky, I gotta deal with him now. And he disappears. The Rakage falls down to his knees, sweating. The bloodlust that Naruto was putting out was making the Rakage's knees shake. We now go to Naruto, Sasuke and Harry. Who, Sasuke and Harry are still camouflage, throwing them behind Naruto. Naruto lands in front of the person, just punching and saying, who are you, what do you want? He says, I'm Pain from the Akatsuki. We want to recruit you. Your power will be very useful in destroying all the villages and capturing the Tower Beast. Naruto goes, but I'm the Nine Toys in Cherokee. Pain says, we know, but the reason we want to capture the Tower Beast isn't very important. We only need a bit of the Nine Toys chakra. So you could still keep your Tower Beast. Naruto and Pain says, well, if you end up actually working by our side and not against us, we will help you destroy the Leaf Village. And how to just laugh saying, do I look like I need your help to destroy the Leaf Village? And Pain goes, well, it can be very useful to have people to watch your back. And Arthur thinks about it and says, okay, but on one condition, you got to tell me a bit more about them special eyes of yours. Pain thinks about it and says, okay, fair. Naruto then leaves with Pain to go to the Akatsuki base, and he also brings along Sasuke and Harry, and he explains if I'm coming, so are they. Pain accepts us, but says there's going to be a slight problem. Itachi is in the Akatsuki. Hearing this, Naruto goes, hmm, okay then, new offer. Naruto and, I mean, Itachi and Sasuke get to 1v1 as well. Pain says, I can't exactly agree to that, but I'll keep the other Akatsuki from jumping in if you do fire. And they leave. And they leave. When Naruto finally gets there, they open the base and they walk in. All the Akatsuki members, except for Itachi, were there. And that's because Pain sent on a message for Itachi to leave beforehand because he ain't watching that scrap. Itachi thinks, "Damn it, maybe next time." And anyway, he gets introduced to everyone, and they all seem so cocky, saying, "Why is this brat here?" Blah blah blah. It was the dairy who first called him a brat, and Naruto says, Did you just call me a fucking brat? You blot, you fucking wannabe girl, mate. I'll drag you by your ponytail and slap you silly. So he laughs and says, Let's see how you do against my art. He chucks in a clear explosion at Naruto, and Naruto just firms it and says, Well, is that really all you got? He then summons up his Kagane and launches it at the dairy, slapping him across the cave, wrapping him around his leg, and picking him up and slamming him back ground. He then gets on top of him against punching him until Naruto's hands are bloody and he stands up saying and spits on him saying learn your lesson you tramp. The rest of the Akatsuki watching this are quite impressed and one, v one, one by one they all learn their lesson as Naruto beat the shit out of all of them not killing them but letting them know he's a top dog. That's when Toby appeared and still acting like his child himself and Naruto didn't buy it at all and said why the fuck are you acting like a little prat? I can sense you're one of the strongest people here. Here in this everyone's confused and Toby just laughs it off and Naruto can get the message that he's keeping his, his secret hidden. So he just lets it go saying, actually sorry I got it wrong, I sense in pain, not you. And he gives a look at a beetle that's saying, I know, and you know I know. After this, him and a beetle go walking to as Toby gave the excuse, I want to give the new guy a tour. 
they begin talking as soon as they got away from everyone toby's fate voice changed back to his deeper beta voice and he goes naruto is a maki how could you how do you know how did you see through my act and naruto goes ain't that hard i could send your chakra charts is off the your chakra is off the charts and the beat goes oh i guess i need to figure out a way to hide that and he also says and also I could see your eyes a bit different. Whether you want to admit it or not, you got the same eyes as Pain and a Sharingan. P- Obito's caught off guard saying, I don't have my Sharingan activated. And he says, I could just tell. And he explained, and, he, and Naruto says, Well, explain your real motive because I am buying this Destroy the Leaf Village bullshit. Hearing this, Obito be a last thing. <laughs> You're exactly like the rumors were. Genius. He explains the plan about the Ten Tails, Madara Chiha being alive to destroy the Leaf Village. And Naruto says, cool, just one condition. I'm the one who destroys the Leaf Village and the third Okage gets saved for me. That's what it's done, so. Bito says, <laughs> I don't want to get my hands dirty anyway. And Naruto makes one thing clear to Bito by pinning him against the wall. But he activates his Kamui and Naruto falls through him. And he says, you really think that's going to stop me? Naruto grabs Obito through his Kamui saying, I'm just that guy, power. I have to, your Kamui don't do shit against me. Obito seeing this, Obito seeing this, realised that Naruto was a huge danger, being able to negate his intangibility. He pinned him against the wall saying, If you plan to betray me, try to take my what nine tells, or attempt to kill me, I will drip you limb from limb. And when Madara Chiha comes, I don't care what sort of legendary shinobi he is, I'll make him a bitch. He begins choking Obito to make the point across and he drops him but say, and he says, But until then, you have my full trust. His eyes begin glowing red. Don't fuck it up. He disappears in the flash. Obito's holding onto his throat and he gives me Madara vibes. Ugh, these next few years ain't gonna be fun. But other than that, guy, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you share your friends, family, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos. And I hope you did enjoy. Thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. And yeah, guys, I'll see you all in a bit. Peace out. Love.